we are now moving to our third uh, presentation this, in this webinar. This is uh, by uh, Sham Klili. Uh, she is a CNRS research investigator at the Marseille Developmental Biology Institute, and she will completely change topic. She will present the microfluidic approach to investigate the role of mechanical constraints on tissue reorganization, so a new tool to really explore maybe some of the questions that we have just discussed in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for Matthias for the in invitation and the opportunity to share uh, this work with uh, like more the developmental biology community than just the biophysics and uh, uh, mechanical engineer community. So um, yeah, my name is Sham. Uh, now I'm a researcher in the Developmental Biology Institute in Marseille. But I have to say this is like the last part of my PhD that I completed many years ago with François Graner and Hélène Delano Ayari. So I'm really happy to share uh, uh, this work with you. And uh, actually, it's my favorite part of my PhD. So, um, so here, the idea is to go more in like uh, technical methods to measure uh, tissue mechanical properties. Um, so, can, yeah, yeah. so here, the idea, I, I don't need to convince you that uh, there is a strong coupling during mechanical uh, during um, embryo de de development or uh, organoids uh, self uh, organization, that there is a strong coupling between the gene patterning and the mechanics. And of course, one of one of the key points is to uh, be able to measure uh, make it locally tissue mechanical properties and to correlate them eventually with cellular events such as cell division, rearrangements, but also with local gene expression. Uh, so here, actually, uh, I'm just going to uh, push that. Uh, this is annoying. Why is it not interfering? Anyway, I'll put it on the corner back. Uh, so here, this is a, a fusion of actually uh, 72 hours gas fluid. So this kind of resonates with the previous talks. And here you can see that just because uh, tissues have surface tension and uh, effective viscosities, they can fuse as uh, liquid droplets. And of course, uh, you can measure uh, the global uh, tissue properties, but if you're interested in understanding why they fuse, you would be tempted to not only uh, measure how fast they fuse, but how cells mix, for example. So there were nice techniques uh, uh, developed uh, these last years, actually, and one that is quite powerful is uh, my micropipette aspiration. So this is a work from Karine Gevorkian uh, uh, that has uh, almost 10 years old now where you can just uh, apply your pressure difference through a pipette to a tissue, and then measure, measuring the dynamics of aspiration of the tissue, you can infer uh, uh, tissue mechanical properties, such as uh, uh, viscoelastic properties at the cell scale and more the, the, the global tissue uh, viscosity. And now this technique has been uh, applied more to developmental uh, relevant uh, things. Uh, so here it's it's a nice uh, recent paper from uh, François Fagotto lab where they take explants from Xenopus uh, larvae at the uh, ectoderm or mesoderm tissues and they can uh, really nicely measure the differences in uh, viscoelastic properties of the tissues. So here you can see that you have a rapid uh, phase that is more due to the viscoelastic response of cells and then a more uh, uh, slower phase that is tissue uh, viscosity, and you can see that there is a strong rapid uh, response uh, in the mesoderm, which is not the case in the ectoderm. So here, the motivation of the work I'm presenting is really, okay, but can we go further and really uh, understand what's the interplay between individual cell deformation and cell rearrangements, and how these two uh, components contribute to the tissue mechanical properties? Because if you compress a tissue, uh, you can have the cells that just uh, deform, like uh, an elastic, or rearrange uh, like a grain of salt. And you have all sorts of behavior intermediates. And of course, uh, nice experiments can be uh, uh, experiments where you can impose stress and deformation to the tissue and image at the same time at the cellular scale. And these uh, such experiments have been done, for example, in Guillaume Chara's lab, where they stretched cell monolayers and can nicely measure both uh, stress uh, relaxation on time, but also uh, uh, compute measure with imagine the cell deformation. So here, uh, this is a very nice setup, but it's not really adapted to 3D tissues such as organoids. 
on a, in, in, in such device, for example, you, you, you never see cell rearrangement. So this is probably due to the cell monolayer structure. So in this work, like we, we try to take the advantage of the pipette experiment, which is really broadly used in uh, 3D tissues mechanics, but to combine it with live imaging. So as they are 3D tissues, we, we are going to use two photon imaging, but this is also compatible with uh, confocal uh, microscopy uh, in, with some limitation. And in this work, we use teratoma cell aggregates with the F9 cell line, but this can be used on any spheroids or organoids. The idea is, uh, so here you can see a two photon uh, Z stack of such organoids when they are not stressed. So uh, uh, here we put uh, a dye three for them in the, in the medium and you can have for free access to the intercellular space and the cell shapes and contours. So the idea was to, to, to make it compatible with the imaging. We made a micro device that is kind of mimicking the pipette aspiration. Uh, but the idea here is uh, we don't want to, to track things in 3D because it's still quite challenging. So we compress, we pre-compress the tissue between uh, the, the cover slip and the PDMS device on a fixed uh, height. So here we chose 100 micrometers. So this will be like uh, 10 layers of cells. So you still have a 3D tissue, but the fact that it's confined makes that we hope we can make like uh, 2D analysis of what's happening. So this is just how the device uh, look like. Uh, and you can just uh, really simply uh, apply pressure differences by uh, applying height difference between the in inlet and the outlet of the, of the device. Uh, so this is just to compare with what's happening in pipette experiments. So this is very similar. This is a bright film movie. And uh, you can see that, uh, the, I mean, it's quite similar, except that now it's a channel, there is PDMS, and you have a reservoir with many gastroloids. And you can measure the lens aspire, but you can also, if the lens is very uh, large, you can just measure locally the velocity field and average uh, this velocity field and get the similar curves that you would get for pipette aspiration. And you get the same uh, uh, like uh, effective response, like elastic first, an elastic deformation, then a stationary phase where the tissue has more uh, viscous behavior and the final phase uh, when uh, the tissue is too small to be constrained by the constriction. So now to push further, uh, what happens when you look with two photon imaging? So this is an example of the same uh, kind of movies, but taken take, take, take uh, at a fixed uh, Z plane with two photon uh, microscopy. So this is uh, like a, a one hour long movie. And you can see that by eye, I, you can see cell deformation. You can see that cells do not change too much in plane. So the, 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 the kind of idea we had that we can do uh, pseudo 2D is kind of uh, fine. And uh, you can see that you have highly stretched uh, cells. You have an intermittent flow, and there are many things going on. So what can we extract for, from such movies? Uh, so one thing I was really interested in cell rearrangement. So here now you can track the cell rearrangement. So the, the, the contacts between cells that disappear and the new contacts that are formed. And here, if you integrate the pattern of cell rearrangement, you can see that actually the aspiration is imposing to the, the tissue passive uh, cell rearrangement uh, field. So we are in a way imposing passive rearrangement to a tissue. And this is, I think, an, uh, a powerful tool to now uh, study uh, exactly how tissue relax constraint under imposed constraint. Um, so we, we can go more in detail in this rearrangement dynamics, for example, measure, measuring the disappearance time of junctions and the appearance. So uh, and then uh, comparing, to, comparing it with the local def deformation of cells. So for example, what we find is that the, the velocity is rather constant on the whole range of deformation. But when you reach very high deformation, you kind of have a exploding velocity of recreation of junctions. And we think it's because you have a change of mechanism. And at this stage, you have more sliding between cells and really attachment with newer uh, junctions. Um, so now how can we relate that to more like uh, viscoelastic properties? Um, so imagine you have a piece of tissue and your, your piece of tissue and the whole tissue is flowing, deforming. And if you take a small box of cells, uh, these cells will, be, uh, will uh, undergo some deformation rate by the rest of the tissue that it's kind of uh, uh, following passively, but it has many uh, different options to respond to it. So one option is to purely deform as an elastic with no rearrangement. The other one is to rearrange instantaneously and then you're like uh, sand. And of course you have all intermediate rates 
where rearrangements can occur on finite time scale uh, that I will call to R. And then on this different uh, scenario, you won't have the same evolution for the average cell shape in your moving box. So here in our experiments, we can indeed, if we track the cells, identify both cell deformations and cell rearrangements. For example, here, uh, the, the magenta and yellow cells were in contact and then they lost contact. And we can uh, then analyze the average cell shape in boxes that will move and be deformed with the flow of the tissue. Uh, how, how do we do that without doing a single, uh, single cell tracking and segmentation? We can use classical tools like optical flow to measure the local deformation rates or uh, Fourier transform to get the, the local uh, cell deformation. And I'm not going to be too long on that, but basically uh, what you can measure is uh, in red is, uh, is a real evolution of the cell shape pattern. And in blue, it's the deformation rate uh, that is also measured. So it's at which rate the tissue is deformed. And then you can simulate the average cell shape evolution in this box and by making assumptions on the value on these relaxation time scales. And you can see that actually you can find very different evolutions. For example, if you consider that the tissue was not rearranging, you would get a very high cell deformation that you do not observe because the real one is a red one here. And you can see that quite a decent precision, we can infer that the relaxation time scales due to rearrangements in this system are around 20 minutes uh, time scale. So now what happens uh, if we do another geometry and then uh, instead of just flowing, they aggregate uh, flows and relax on a small channel. Then you can see that the cells quickly relax uh, their shape um, and uh, they aggregate also. And if you do the same quantitative analysis, you can find that the cells did not rearrange at all. So here, if you if the channel is made small in a long, uh, not long, uh, not uh, long, but small enough, uh, then the cells will flow, but will not have the time to rearrange. And so you can just probe the single cell uh, uh, viscoelastic properties. So here, the time scale of the cell shape relaxation is really a probing of more the the nuclei and the cell cortex uh, uh, rheologies. So to recapitulate, uh, if, you, if you have an aggregate and you aspire it, uh, then you have different scenario. One is you, you do a short aspiration and then you relax, and then you will just get an elastic behavior and you will just probe the viscoelastic properties of cells. Otherwise, if you do a long enough aspiration, cells will have time to rearrange. And then what you will measure is the time scales of rearrangements, which are more related uh, to the effective viscosity of the tissue. But now what happens if you do the aspiration after having blocked for a while the aggregate, like uh, uh, beyond the 20 minutes that we found that is a relaxation time scales. So here I just show you uh, uh, the, the aggregate just after aspiration. So you can see it's like a sausage because it has been blocked in a channel for a while. It has already relaxed uh, the residual uh, cell shape. But now you can see some interesting behavior that we were not expecting that the aggregate is kind of rounding up, but it's not rounding up uh, with just cell rearrangements, but it's rounding up by compressing cells in the other directions. And uh, if you do the quantification again, you can find that this is uh, compatible with the time scales of rearrangement we found in the previous uh, experiments and quantification. And to, to make it short, I think what is interesting here is that uh, the aggregate has some surface tension so when you, you, you make it, uh, uh, you block it in the, in the channel, then when you uh, and release it, you will have some um, relaxation that is due to the cell relaxation, but then cells are round, they have relaxed their deformation, but the aggregate is still super deformed compared to the round state. And then to round up, the aggregate will compress the cells in the other dimension. And this is what we call an elastocapillary behavior, which means that you have a competition between cell elasticity and uh, tissue surface tension. And I found that quite uh, uh, interesting because it means that there, you have an interplay between the aggregate geometry, the surface tension, and the bulk cell deformation. So I think if you believe in, if you think in terms of organoids or uh, this might have some implication for uh, the coupling between uh, organoids boundaries and cell deformation. So to recapitulate, we find uh, order of magnitudes for these different parameters. 
on, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the, the, the order of magnitudes we find are consistent with what was uh, found uh, by different means uh, in the literature previously on the same cell line. And one of the main uh, message is that these tissues are very soft, like 100 Pascal, this is very soft. And the thing is, uh, the, if you have uh, compared to the surface tension forces, this is very comparable, which means that the cells are, are so soft that when you see an aggregate fusion, actually, uh, the, the fusion might not be due to cell rearrangement, but just cell de deforming so much to round up the tissue. So of course, you can also uh, apply drugs like myosin and see that you affect such behaviors that are myosin dependent. So uh, to conclude the, on the perspectives on this work, uh, some, uh, something we could improve is, uh, of course, uh, now we use the coarse grain analysis that do not require tracking or, or, or segmentation, but now with the new deep learning tools like CellPose or Stardist, now we are working uh, on uh, making the full tracking and cell rearrangement detection. Uh, of course, there, there is a need of optimizing the channel's geometry depending on the size of the gastroloid, and also a need to develop tools to measure mechanical stresses within the tissue. And uh, another thing that would be interesting that uh, Hélène uh, has started doing is to apply mechanical constraints on long time scales to trigger mechanosensitive pathways. And the last thing that I'm currently starting is like probing specially heterogeneous mechanical properties and correlating them. Uh, with uh, the local gene expression. And just to conclude, so we have heard in the previous talks about gastroloids. So this is a movie from the lab I work now uh, on gastroloids polarization, actually. And uh, actually we observe collective flows around this polarization. And here it's a gene bracuri. And you can see that you have a, a strong heterogeneities in cell behavior and gene expression. And now we are trying to aspire such aggregates and to look locally at how the cellular, uh, the, the, the tissue mechanical properties are uh, affected uh, by gene expression. Uh, so uh, we've been starting uh, working on that on gastroloids in the lab. And uh, we are also in embedded deformable beads in the gastroloids to uh, measure locally uh, the local stress in the tissue. Uh, so to, to conclude, these are very preliminary results on uh, aspiration on gastroloids with uh, such uh, stress sensors. And I would like to just uh, thank uh, infinitely my two PhD advisors, Hélène and Francois, uh, for giving me uh, the opportunity to develop together this uh, project. And I think we are going to continue working on some aspects together on that. And also uh, the team I work in now in Marseille, and especially Louise Daguerre, who's been uh, really starting uh, the gastroloids uh, um, uh, aspiration experiments, and Elsa, who's uh, doing the bits. So uh, thank you very much. And sorry, I was a bit long. Thanks for the great overview, Shan. So we have time for some questions. So just to the related to the last part. So when you move away from isotropic structures like spheroids and you have domains like creep velus axis or an embryo, how do you get spatial control in, in where you perturb the structures? Is this kind of, you just need to measure a lot of structures or can, can you build a system where you get this spatial control? I think the idea, so for, if you have really like, um, I think this method uh, would work well for, you can have heterogeneous structures. If you have really creeps and things that start to be tricky, I don't know if we can apply the same uh, methods we need to, uh, to, like if you start to have folding uh, with uh, like pseudo 2D structures inside, I don't know. But uh, uh, I understand your point that, okay, now if we have a specially heterogeneous uh, tissue, and now we are applying a homogeneous things. So how do we get something out of it? And I think the, the power of this method is it's a local me method. So actually what you just need to measure is the local deformation rate, okay? And the local deformation rate, when you apply uh, an aspiration will depend on the complexity of the system, but you measure it locally, it is what it is. And then you measure locally how the microstructure of the tissue reacts to this deformation rate. So then indeed, uh, if you want to probe different reaction rates, then it's a bit of try and error and you need to change, for example, I think the geometry is the most powerful way uh, to change, uh, to have a broad range of patterns of deformation rates. Uh, for example, uh, you can do uh, oscillatory uh, uh, aspiration. Uh, so I don't know if it answers your, yeah, your question. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 